Now you know how to get list of processes that were started by specific user and how to get list of all processes. And for that you need to use the option dash capital A or dash E. Now let me demonstrate you how we are able to start additional processes and how to kill processes. For that let me make this window half size of the screen like so. And let me open up a new tab and drag it here and make it stacked at the top of previous tab like this. And here in this tab let me start additional process called top. Type simply top. And I'll see currently running processes in such interactive table. And as you may have noticed in this table that there are currently two different processes. Bash and top. Top is currently long running process, it wasn't terminated, that's why I see this process here in this table. Also in this table you may see process ID, user that has started corresponding process and other parameters like CPU usage and memory usage. Alright, let me now start additional process here in this tab and I'll connect to this container using additional bash process and we expect to see one more bash process here in this list. Alright, let me find out ID of this container, docker ps, here is this ID. And now let me start additional shell process, docker exec dash it, here will be ID of the container and next I'll enter name of the process I want to start in running container and it will be bash process. Let's press enter and I immediately see additional bash process here in this table. And that means that now there are two different bash processes running in this Linux computer. And notice that this bash process has process ID 1, it is called root process and this bash process has ID 5155. It is next number after this one that was assigned to top process. That's how you are able to monitor processes in real time. Alright, let's now start additional process and let's enter simply ls command. This will be short running process, it will appear for a short period of time here in this table and afterwards it will be stopped. Ok, let's examine it. ls. And actually it was not shown in this table, let's try once again. ls. Probably this uh, top process could not catch this short running process. Alright, let's try one more process, mkdir test. Let's now make one more folder, mkdir test 1. Again, I don't see this process here in this list because it is really a short running process. Let's rm those two folders, rm test. I need to use dash r option in order to remove directory, rm dash r test and same with test1 folder. Alright, actually I wasn't able to catch in this table short running processes like rm, mkd, ir, ls, but let me exit from this bash shell process, exit, and start additional bash process once again. Notice that when I have exited from bash shell in this tab, this bash shell process was terminated here as well. Alright, now let me do the same action and open up again bash process here. And I'll see bash process here in this list and you see that uh, its ID is 5179. And uh, this number tells that there were processes that were started between those two numbers. And that proves that uh, actually those commands are M, MKDIR, those LS commands were actual processes, short running processes. Alright, that's how you could use the top command in order to start top process that is long running process and it shows you basically such table with all running processes with consumption of memory, CPU resources by those processes and so on. Now let me demonstrate you how you could kill specific process. For that you could use command kill and as argument this command expects ID of the process you want to kill. And let's kill this top process that is running here in this window. In my case, process ID of this process is here, 5154. Let me enter this number here, 5154, and press enter. And now I see that this process was stopped immediately. And if I list processes now, PS, I'll see that there is no top process. It was killed and that's why this table was actually closed. And we have got back to command prompt. 
That's how you could list processes, how you could use tap process in order to see processes in real time, and how you could kill processes. And next, let me show you additional utility for monitoring of processes, and it is called HTOP. It is much more nicely looking utility than TOP, but we need to use apt-get install in order to install it at this Ubuntu computer, because by default this command is absent here. Let me try that htop, and yes, you see that command is not found. Let's next use apt-get in order to install htop to this Linux computer, and next let's run it. I'll see you in the next lecture, guys. Bye-bye.